A few months ago, this would have been really weird. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past year, you know about Miss Rona. She's been terrorizing the world since December of 2019, and now we are all fed up with her. That doesn't mean that the virus is gone, though. There have been 287,395 new cases in the past week alone, and around 5.84 million cases total in the U.S. That leaves the question, what should have we done to prevent the spread of the coronavirus? While it was difficult to understand and implement when necessary, the best strategies that a country could use to prevent the spread of COVID-19 are early testing, contact tracing, and strict quarantining. We can see this clearly when we analyze three countries' different strategies of how they handled the virus. The United States, Italy, and South Korea. We'll take a trip back to March and check in on Italy. How are you doing, Italy? Oh, and how in the world did you get like that? Oh, well, Italy wasn't doing so hot. Political figures actively ignored scientists' recommendations to wear a mask, stay six feet apart, and not shake each other's hands. I'm talking to you, Matteo Salvini. The government decided to shut down the country gradually instead of all at once. But that doesn't sound like such a terrible idea, right? Shut down only the highly infected regions and let the others be. Well, no, it's never that simple. Let me show you. Let's make three regions. Or let's do four regions. So, someone from the outside goes into region one and gets infected. And then he starts spreading the infection to all the other people in his area. Well, the people in that area don't want to get infected, obviously, or go into a quarantine for a whole bunch of months. So they start leaving to go live with their mom or their aunt or their ex-wives, cousins, babysitter, or whatever, I don't know their lives. But someone is accidentally infected and he, start, he or she starts spreading it to this region and this region and so on and so forth until all of whatever country is infected. So let's rewind. All right. So let's create those four regions again. And the first person to get infected flies in and starts infecting this. Well, the government is like, oh, we don't want another pandemic to happen again, so we're going to quarantine everybody off. Oh, no, that's a bad marker. They start shut, shutting everybody off, so they can't, they can't get into anyone else's regions, and they can't spread it to anyone else. So, while this place is infected, they can't leave to go with, live with their moms or their aunts or whatever. Um, so the whole country is protected from the virus, or at least the virus is slowed down, because we know not everyone is going to follow the rules. So that, combined with people ignoring scientists' recommendations and inconsistent treatment across the country, created this. Okay, well, Italy tried. Let's try another country. How about South Korea? How you doing? Oh, that's awesome. People are wearing masks and staying six, six feet apart. And wow, all that testing. South Korea did very well when handling the virus. They started testing in the first week of February, just three weeks after the first case of the virus, and continued to test copiously after that. This helped officials keep those who were sick in quarantine and those who were healthy away from the virus. One controversial aspect of South Korea's strategy, though, was its public use of contact tracing. 
Once someone was positive, a team of people would ask them questions about where they had been, track them using security footage, and reported it to an app that told citizens where the infected people had been. This made it very easy for people to avoid getting infected, but it sparked a debate about personal privacy. Was it invasive for South Korea to track its citizens? And there's no way that that system could be implemented here in America. You know people would throw a fit about their freedoms. So anyone harassing me to wear a mask, you guys are violating federal law. Do you yeah. get that? Get that on camera. Yeah. So although their strategies are unlikely to be implemented in other countries, South Korea's use of early intervention and contact tracing allowed them to avoid this and go straight to this. Now, let's check in on the good old U.S. of A. How are we doing? I happen to believe in it. I would take it. I, as you know, I took it for a 14-day period. Thank you. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection? Oh, that's nice. Anything else? If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. Okay, we're going to have to do a lot of work here. See, while we did do some things right, like being able to handle the influx of new patients and working fast on a vaccine, there are many more things that we did wrong. Like, who let this guy be president? Oh yeah, it was us. Seriously though, these comments were very dangerous. The FDA reported that it became aware of reports of serious heart rhythm problems in patients with the virus who were treated with the anti-malaria drug, often in combination with antibiotics. So maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't be encouraging people to take that. Also, don't inject disinfectants. Well, our president is telling people to take dangerous substances in order to get rid of the virus. But if you're educated, you should be fine. Right? Right? Well, shoot. The Department of Education went against the CDC's recommendations and had schools reopen in the fall. While schools are trying their hardest to follow guidelines about social distancing and mask wearing, educators and public health experts are expecting that schools will be going back to online soon because of a resurgence of the virus. So while the U.S. didn't have it as bad as Italy, we are getting close because of the government's decisions to condone the use of dangerous substances, lack of consideration for the CDC's recommendations, among many other factors. So what can we learn from this? Based on all the lessons we've learned from Italy, South Korea, and the United States, we now know that early testing, strict quarantining, and having the people in power follow and recommend what scientists are saying are all the most important strategies to containing a global pandemic. Also, don't inject Clorox. 